Thank you, Kate, and welcome everyone to BMO Field, where it's all fun and games outside, but redemption is brewing inside because this is the only team, Dwayne Ford, who have beat the Toronto Argonauts so far this year. The undefeated home record 4 and 0 of the Toronto Argonauts on the line tonight against the Calgary Stampeders. Chad Kelly, of course, in that last matchup didn't get much of a chance to play. He's got some help in his backfield here tonight as well with AJ Olet. Yeah, he sure does, and hopefully the Argos get in a position where they're able to use Olet more than they did in the first meeting with Calgary where he had a season low seven carries in that ball game looking to late, make life difficult for him as he has for many offensive players in the CFL this season Calgary middle linebacker Micah Awe leads the CFL in tackles it is Dave Dickinson for the Calgary Stampeders in control of his club on the season trying to get all the injuries sorted through and Ryan Dinwiddie as he took the model of the equipment staff, the video, medical, scheduling, training camp schedule, everything that he learned while a member of the Calgary Stampeders coaching staff and is trying to apply that to his Toronto Argonauts club. They are done with their bye weeks on the season. Crazy, they've already had all three of them here as we haven't even hit Labor Day yet. But the Toronto Argonauts, it's all football from here moving forward as they get set to kick things away. Toronto won the toss, they take the football It'll be in the hands of Chad Kelly in just a moment. First, it's all about the return game across the 35, out past the 40. And good job that time from Sean Brissett to get a little bit of extra room for Chad Kelly in the starting offense of the Toronto Argonauts. Yeah, and as you heard off the top, Chad Kelly, limited opportunity in the last meeting with Calgary, the Argos only loss of the season. Kelly had to come out early in that one due to injury with Cameron Dukes taking over going the rest of the way in that ball game. You see Micah Awe staring down Kelly throughout the night. 71 tackles so far on the season. Pushing for all-star votes. We'll see what he does as they begin with a little fake to Oleg. Go to the slant. On the backside it is Demonte Coxie right away into the fold here as he makes his 17th catch of the season. Here's what he's surrounded by with the starting offense. Yeah, and an offensive line that's played particularly well to start this season. Of course, Boyd by the return from injury of Peter Nicastro who missed the entire 2022 season and in the receiving court you already saw him with his welcome back moment DeMonte Coxey continuing his fine play he's missed the last three games for the double blue looks strong in warm-ups great start with a 25 yard pitch and catch this time they go with a little pop pass on the jet sweep around the corner at the 30 to the 20 it's Curly Gittins Jr. cutting back inside the 10 and he is pushed out of bounds by Shaq Richardson, but back-to-back -back chunk plays here for the Toronto Argonauts to open things up. That one goes for 30. Yeah, big one here, and A.J. Olette kind of playing decoy on these first couple of plays. Nice job here to gain the perimeter for the Toronto Argonauts. Quickly, and for the top, it's intercepted! And it is the Stampeders being able to create a turnover. And a thin air as Kelly gets picked off just his sixth of the season. And that'll be Nick Taylor, his first of 2023 here with the Calgary Stampeders. They talked about trying to create more turnovers coming in. That's just their seventh of the season. Yeah, Nick Taylor out on the wide side and the corner spot. You see him on the far left of your screen is the man who does the damage here. Argo's looking for a quick hitter, and you can see it just sailed a little bit on Kelly over the fingertips of Curly Gittins Jr. Like he just barely got a piece of that. Taylor covering the wide out. That's the INT. Maybe a no laces situation there for Kelly, and just a bit off the mark trying to get it out quickly. Here's Jake Bear going to work. He'll be happy to hand it off and get big slashing runs like that throughout the night. Diedrich Mills into the fold early here. And let's get a look at Jake Bear as he steps in after having a big game against these Argonauts just a few short weeks ago. Yeah, a game that the, the, the Calgary Stampeders were looking at to be perhaps a turning point in their season and, and boy them going forward. Struggled last week against Winnipeg. Jake Mayer looks to shake that one off. Get things back on track against a tough, tough opponent here. Beating the CFL in passing yards with almost 2,400 coming in this way. Tipped away at the line of scrimmage. Incomplete. And here's the Stampeders starting offense. Yeah, a little change on that offense. Bryce Bell, the Canadian, is out. 
at the left tackle spot. Deontay DeMary comes back in. He's an American that leads to some, some juggling in the receiving Who's that? as well. But Marky Thambles <laughs> making his return. Second stint for him in Calgary after catching 72 passes with the Toronto Argonauts a year ago. 109 targets. That was second to only Curly Gittens Jr. here in Toronto last season for Ambles. As Mayor on second and long gets it in. Reggie Pendleton knocked away. A Darius Pickett. He can do it all. That time in pass coverage, he got the job done. Yeah, and what an acquisition a Darius Pickett has been for the Toronto Argonauts. We'll see him working here against Reggie Pendleton. He's coming out of the slot. You'll see him right on the hash mark. Pickett. The nickel linebacker picks up that number three receiver and is just in his hip pocket all the way. Third knockdown of the season. Go with three tackles for loss, three sacks. 49 total tackles as well. It'll be Cody Grace to send it away for the Stan Peters. Packs into this one. Best punting average in the CFL at 48 yards per. No return on the 45 yard punt to get things going for Cody Grace and the Stampeders back and forth we go Kelly throws the early interception 4-0 home record of the Toronto Argonauts on the line here as Kelly takes to the field when we return 33 and a half points per game that is the Toronto Argonauts offensive puddle the best in the CFL and it's led by that man who has exploded onto the scene in his first year as the full-time starter yeah the, you look at the company he's in in this particular graphic highest single season quarterback rating Chad Kelly on pace to be number three overall Steve Dickinson knows a thing or two about quarterback rating and being efficient with the football here Toronto goes to the ground game AJ Olet averaging five and a half per carry so far this season let's look at the Stampeders starting defense that goes up against Olet and a homecoming for the Toronto native Derek Wigan most experienced member of this Stampeder D the linebacking core will keep an eye on Titus Wall and here in his sophomore season terrific in 10 games as a rookie. Shaq Richardson, another guy back for his second stint in Calgary after being with Toronto the last couple of years. Pressure on from the stands. Kelly got it away cleanly. Lots of room to run in the open field. Up near the 55, and it is Cam Phillips. With the big catch and run nine targets against Ottawa. Season high just a couple weeks ago. That one goes for 29. Yeah, you see the safety blitz and Dozier right up the middle. That's vacated. Kelly knows he's got to get the ball out and where that open space is going to be. Finds Cam Phillips. Taking exactly that spot vacated by the blitzing safety. Good read. Nice execution there by quarterback and receiver. Pick up that time from Kelly is this time Brandon Calver. The fullback comes in and tries to lead the way for Olet. A pickup of about six yards on the play. It's crazy to think of. Kelly right now has 150 fewer dropbacks this season than Jake Mayer does, Dwayne. And it's because of time of possession. Argonauts kind of low. The running game here for the Argonauts controlling things. Bye weeks. Yeah, I mean, it's so many situational things, right? The, the bye weeks, of course, a significant factor. Kelly missing part of a game, whereas Mayer has has played all the way for his team but also having leads yep. right not needing to throw the football as much and being able to score on big plays Calgary chasing sometimes in games is this one high and away big collision at the 26 yard line and it's Kobe Williams Curly Gittins Jr. off to a rough start in this one an interception headed his way and now pays the price on second down you see the intended receiver Curly Gittins, and I appreciate this play from both sides. Curly Gittins, he knows the guys there, absolutely fearless going up to try and make a play in traffic for his quarterback. And there you see Kobe Williams delivering a good, hard, clean hit. Yep. Good, tough football on both sides. A little high again from Kelly. Intended for Curly Gittins Jr. This one an incompletion instead of an interception. As Nick Taylor ended the first drive for his beating angles this one towards the corner drops it out of bounds and we'll see where they spot it when we come back on the other side Jake Bear 
and the Calgary Stampeders get possession back. A two-game losing streak right now. Two and two against the East. They'd like to improve that to a winning record here tonight at BMO Field. Welcome back to BMO Field. Jake Mayer and the Stampeders on field with possession. And last time they had possession at home against these Toronto Argonauts, he went to work. The yardage wasn't really there. The depth of target wasn't even really there. But, man, they just pieced it together on this night, didn't they? Well, that was it. A lot of nickel and diamond, fairly conservative, playing it safe, and recognizing the Argos were in a situation where they were going to be limited offensively. So Calgary was able to play a little bit more, more conservatively. You saw under 150 yards there for Mayer through the air, but a season high, 137 on the ground for running back Dietrich Mills in that ball. Offense for Toronto held below 20 points, only the first time that's happened this season to the midway point in that game against Calgary. This time over the middle, it'll one hop into the feed of 88. That's the fourth overall pick, Old Tucker. Let's get a look at the Toronto starting defense. And defensive end, you have Pilar and Urimilade. 34 games played as a Calgary Stampeder. Winton McManus in at the weak side linebacker spot. 43 games played as a Calgary Stampeder. Deshaun Amos, one of three guys in the middle of that secondary who used to wear red and white. Needless to say, there is a Calgary flavor to these Toronto Argonauts, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Bear with a little bit of pressure coming. It's picked up by Toronto. Never saw him coming that time. It's Falarn Arimalade. He gets in for his seventh sack of the season. And with that warning, there's number seven. And just watch the speed of Arimalade coming around that corner. Obviously, a little bit of confusion in that protection scheme between the receiver Ambles and the tackle to Mary. It initially looked like Ambles was gonna take him to Mary sits inside as a result. And then when Ambles let him go, Deontay DeMary was kinda caught in no man's land. Tough to get back out there. Short kick at this time. High wobbling boot. Great official field position here for the Argonauts. The 45 yard line. Javon Lee catches it after a 44 yard punt. And Toronto with some flags there at the end of the play that will clean up on the other side. A beautiful night at the CNE. Everybody getting an opportunity. A little whack-a-mole. It's Dwayne Ford's favorite game. Welcome back to BMO Field. At the end of that last special teams exchange, a blindside block goes against number three, Benoit Marion. For the Toronto Argonauts, the least penalized group in the CFL, that Argonauts special teams unit. It will... Back them up 15 yards to right about where Javon Lee popped the initial punt returns. They'll hand it off around the back. Goes A.J. Olet. Nice north-south. That drives the legs. That'll be enough for an Argonauts first down on first down. A gain of 11. And they managed to create some misdirection here without doing much. You're going to see Olet come back. They said the cover pullers the other way. Counter it back to the left. Olet demonstrating his speed getting out on the perimeter to pick up the first down. Three carries, 21 yards for A.J. Olet to get this one rolling. He comes in with the second best average yards per carry in the CFL behind only Brady Oliveira of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Good throw this time to the outside. Wrapped up quickly. It is DeVaris Davis getting his hands on the football as well. Highest catch rate, 68% on this Argonauts receiving group. Yeah, DeVaris Daniels coming off a big game in his last outing. Three touchdown performance for yet another former Calgary <laughs> Stampeder. It's amazing even looking through statistically getting ready for this game. You can see they talk about, oh, the processes have been followed, and we try to do a lot of the same things that happen there, and it's they're almost lined up statistically because they're put in the same situations. <laughs> yeah. and it feels the same, but on second down here, Toronto tries to get it out. That's Andrew Harris out of the backfield, being harassed by Cam Judge, but not until the veteran legend picks up a first down for the Argonauts. Yeah, you're going to see Andrew Harris come in and then shoot back out to the flat on this one. Good quick read by Kelly. Kelly hands it off inside now to Harris. He gets his 34th carry of the season. 
one touchdown so far for Harris in that leadership role in spelling A.J. Olet. That time they had Harris and Olet in together. And now Olet checks to the sideline and David Unger comes in, who, by the way, right now, 14 targets on the season, 14 catches. Yeah, that was one that jumped <laughs> out at me. Don't always sure handed. see the 100% uh, completion rate when targeted. We'll see if they go his way here on second and five. Kelly stands tall, tries to get outside of Julian Hauser. Tried to put some pressure on, flips it across his body. First down, Argonauts inside the 10, goal to go. There he is again, Andrew Harris on a gain of 15. Yeah, nice escape here by Kelly. Watch for Julian Hauser on the outside, left side of your screen. Defensive end, Isaiah Cage gets just enough of him to keep him occupied long enough to allow Kelly to escape. Kelly goes back to Harris, turning the legs to the end zone! Oh, it was meant to be! He loves playing against the Stampeders, has his whole career, and Andrew Harris into the end zone for the opening score of the ball game. See Harris off play action. Nobody follows him off that run fake. He kind of gets lost in there. Able to sneak out towards the flat for an easy outlet for Chad Kelly for the touchdown. Tacklers across the CFL for a long time been asking for just a little bit of mercy when Andrew Harris is running towards the goal line. He gets one sniff of that goal line and he puts his head down and finishes the job off, as does Boris Beattie. Seven nothing lead. The Argonauts four and zero oh this season when scoring first. A good start after the early interception thrown by Chad Kelly. A nice drive put together by these Toronto Argonauts, and again showing some resilience after the return and some of their field position was negated by a penalty, but. It's all about these two running backs. A.J. Olette gets it started on the ground. That burst to the outside, first down run. Couple of high percentage passes to Andrew Harris to complete the drive. How about the poise you're seeing from Chad Kelly? We reach the midway point of the season and he heads toward the Labor Day Classic and the rematch. Starting to look down defenders, shuffle the feet, stand tall, wait it out. It's a little bit different than the, the extremely excited, exuberant early season Chad Kelly that we see. Yeah, well, and I think when you, you look at Chad Kelly as well and you look at his resume, of course, lots of quarterbacks come from, from big programs and so on, but you got to remember, Chad Kelly's a guy that took his old Miss team in and won in Tuscaloosa, which... <laughs> Not a lot of people have done in, uh, in the last decade or so. So no stage is too big for this guy. Fitting in well here in Toronto and enjoying his time north of the border. Is that time? Big special teams matchup back and forth. Robbie Smith goes after the play with Keelan Thomas. As we get another look at Jake Mayer. On the season, coming in, eight touchdowns, 12 interceptions. They want to clean that up in the completion percentage. We were talking pregame about just how it's it's a strange situation for a Dave Dickinson-led offense with Mark Bueller and Pat Delmonico. Yeah, and you know I think everybody's finding their way a little bit, and we've talked a little bit this season about about new roles as Dave Dickinson takes on the the general manager's role, and maybe a little bit less time to do some of the coaching duties, which means more responsibility for some of his assistants. Pressure on again here from the Argonauts, trying to flip it out underneath on a screen pass. They were looking for Bellamy. Couldn't find Levante Bellamy, leads to second down and long. Yeah, and you'll see the pressure that comes here, but also keep an eye on the back. Bellamy, because he gets knocked down. And this one isn't able to regain his feet as he goes for the cut block initially. On Jordan Williams misses and is out of position as a result. Jordan Williams not easy to bring to the ground. Those quick feet. Former top overall pick in 2020 out of Eastern Carolina. Traded from BC to Toronto this year. 
Mayer loads it up, looks down field, pressure on, dances away. Stays down the field looking for Bagleton and drops it in the bucket. Nods of the head all around, including those that matter the most in the stripes. Uh, this is just a beautiful play all around by Jake Mayer. First of all, let's take a look at the escape. This one looks like it's going to result in a sack. But slides to his right and just perfect touch on this ball with three Toronto Argonaut jerseys closing on Reggie Bagleton. Mayer drops it in there perfectly just before his receiver hits the sideline. The 18th second down conversion catch of the season for Reggie Bagleton. Nobody else on Calgary coming in has more than eight. This time they go with a big toss, backside screen, get Mark and Michelle back into the mix. As he crosses the 55 with a nice gain on first down. Yeah, trying to create a little misdirection there with the fake toss to the left. Hoping to open up that screen back to the right. Watch the running back, Bellamy. Fake toss left. There it is, trying to get the defense flowing a little bit before coming back the other way. Mark Bamble's out there trying to block against his former teammates earlier this season. Digging in against Montez Stiggers. Jamal Peters on the corners. This time, Ambles will line up just to the left of Jake Mayer. He'll hand it off. Slashing it behind Ambles, trying to kick out that backside. It'll be a first down. Calgary moves the chains here, gets a little momentum, and they'll substitute out Rodine Brown for second round pick, and he comes Rice and John. And here you can see as the Stampeders have an extra lineman in there, adding a gap with the tight end, Levante Bellamy. Carrying the rocket running back, former Western Michigan star. It's first and 10, Calgary. This time they do get it going around the corner. Same running play that Toronto ran just a minute ago. Dwayne with the facing away from the line of scrimmage. The rock for a second and can't go anywhere. Rocky Smith smelted out immediately for a loss. And Robbie Smith just getting upfield, doing a nice job maintaining leverage, keep it contained. He's not going to allow himself to be outflanked. Smith out of Wilfred Laurier, kind of followed in the footsteps of Kwaku Boateng in that program, in that train with the former Edmonton star leading up to his combine. Pressure on again from Toronto. They'll try to screen it out again to Bellamy. And the connection just not there. And you, you know, typically might question the, the timing with Bellamy coming in the lineup with Kadeem Carey injured again, but, you know, he's been on the roster yep. a fair bit as, as Carey's been out now for the second time this season that you'd think that they would have some of that timing figured out but just struggling a little bit with it here tonight it's crazy to think that Kadeem Carey only has 24 carries on yeah. the season right now no touchdowns a game high of 44 yards rushing he's back on the injured list right now hoping he gets healthy soon but yeah Bellamy and Mills trying to hold it down for him it's a 43 yard punt Minimal return from the Toronto Argonauts as the CNE rolls on. You should have seen Dwayne Ford's eyes light up. Might be some food in the booth to start the second quarter. After disaster to start the ball game with an interception for Chad Kelly, he came back and threw a touchdown, rolling a little to his left, pumping, faking, finding Andrew Harris, and now he's got 10 straight weeks of football in front of him. Down to Matthew Shinetti with more. Yeah, Marshall, he's going to have to adjust and deal with a lot of different situations over the next 10 weeks because all the Argos bye weeks are now gone. And this is the first time, I think since around 2015, if I have the game logs correct, that Chad Kelly has had to go through week after week after week of football. And when we spoke to Ryan did with you this week. The psychological approach is going to have to be there because Chad Kelly, of course, as we keep on talking about, and 
in his first year as a starter, but Ryan Dignity wants to approach him in practice with an intensity and expectation, demanding the best out of Jack Kelly, but when it comes to games, he wants to have a gentler approach. And I've asked Jack Kelly about his body, about his approach, week after week after week, and guys, it's the same five words. I just want to win. <laughs> just wants to win, just wants to play, and he'll have plenty of opportunity to do both here in the second half of the season. The Argonauts go with an inside run, but you also know, Dwayne, that there's a there's a little game coming up in Hamilton that tends to uh, define matchups, especially for starting quarterbacks in Toronto. It should be a lot of fun to see Chad in that fire. Yeah, rivalry time for, for sure in the Canadian Football League as Labor Day weekend approaches. And for the Toronto Argonauts, when you, you look at that schedule, some big games coming up just within their division. Obviously, Hamilton will see Montreal coming up. Oh, and this one hung up inside, knocked away. That time by Shaq Richardson. Once again, Curly gets the intended target. But you're right, yeah, took, it, took advantage of an Ottawa team that was trying to feel out their quarterback situation and then trying to get a victory here at home again, this time against a tough West opponent, the only team to beat them so far this season. Yes, sir. As you see Shaq Richardson in on the play, his second game back with the Stampeders and good timing for him to rejoin as Jonathan Moxie has been down the last two weeks, struggling with some back issues. Rare two and out for the Argonauts offense. They only do that on 30% of their possessions so far this year. That's the best in the CFL. Beautiful boot from B, this time filling in for Haggerty with the punting responsibilities. Is Big collision on the other end, and Floyd Allen. After a 60-yard punt, Calgary gets possession back. Little mini golf games that you can play. People love that stuff. It's a carnival over there right now, let me tell you. The Ferris wheel. Dwayne was staring that down as much as he was the concessions on the way in. Inside handoff here. Argonauts front up to the task, but a good second push. Emery trying to move the pile forwards. It'll go for a gain of three. We'll take another look here at the work of the Stamps offensive line. They did a nice job washing things down. Allow a little bit of a cut back there. Leave second down and seven. Hard count here. And who jumped first? Side, Toronto number 97. Five yard penalty remains second down. Foxcroft, the lead official here this evening. Thomas Costigan. Six tackles and two sacks into this game tonight at BMO. And Costigan had the combination of that hard count you mentioned, but as well had Diedrich Mills in the backfield who took off like a shot on that hard count, kind of flashing across Costigan's face. So he had the double stimulus there to draw him offside. Ah, the beauty of unlimited motion. The CFL is inside. Handoff on second and two. And to end the first quarter, Sean Oakman, Florida Rimalade, and the blue wall shuts it down. The water is coming. That front for the Argonauts. Riding the wave of this season. The offense helps him out with a 7-0 lead to kick things off. Welcome back to BMO Field. As you see the concessions outside pregame, they're, they're loaded up. There's people everywhere out there. They want a little bit of everything. What is that? Is that the, the, the bacon wrap cannoli got going on there? And, and, and it just so happens that Kat from the CNE has brought us uh, what it, a watermelon burger, I believe, is what you requested, Mr. Ford. Well, uh, and the four-pound the, the taco, four pound taco has, has made an appearance the, uh, as well. Which one do you want? I mean, it's up to you. Your veteran gets the first choice. So, well, I'm taking both. I was going to say, I mean, the, the balsamic glaze here on the watermelon burger. I mean, how, did, how do you hold a watermelon burger? Uh, it's so is, slippery. Is there an eight how do people in, How do people in Saskatchewan do this? I don't think he limped this, eh? I think he got to just this? dig in. Is this feta? You're just going to eat it like... We'll work on it. It's terrible. We'll work on it. The glaze. 
There's so much plays. Oh, I, uh, I actually got. You know what? I got sour cream up my nose. It's it's as an upset. That is a textural delight. No yards. <laughs> Calgary number 45. Didn't see that one coming. 50-yard penalty. First down. Yeah, we're uh, we're going to need more commercial breaks in the <laughs> second quarter. The glaze, yeah. just so much glaze. I mean, yeah, you're you're just messy. <laughs> I look like my son <laughs> Noah right now. Two and a half. Oh, there it is. Yes, we got we got the delivery. Thank you, Cat. Thank you. There we go. We'll, we'll put in some work on those throughout this second quarter. Oh, that was actually great. The sweetness of the ball sending plays really offset. The burn in a way I didn't expect. The CNE. Who knew? Inside handoff here. AJ Olet churning the legs. The sour cream is out of Wayne Ford's nose. For now. I mean, halftime. That thing's. Well, yeah, one of the things that you, you learn about the four pound taco is that. You learn not, things about it? Well, it's not, it's not really meant to be picked up, apparently. And so you got to dig in. And uh, I didn't want the absence of utensils to be a, an impediment to me sampling the wares. Went right after it, like Oled on a first down run. Kelly quickly out of his hands. Cam Phillips picks it up. Nice forward. A Kobe Williams miss. Brandon Dozier looking at his sideline and asking for a different call, but it's a gain of 14. Another Argonauts first down. Yeah, and you look at this Toronto Argonaut receiving core. We mentioned monster game for Devaris Daniels in his last outing. Cam Phillips has had a 100-yard game this season. DeMonte Coxey breaking out. He's been over 100 in a game this season. And you, you look at the depth that you sort of wonder why a guy like Marky Thambles, who was a top 10 in the league and catches last year, how he suddenly becomes expendable. Well, it's the development of some of these other guys. Kelly looking vertically this time. Goes to the cutback throw. Tapping the toes on the sideline. There is Curly Gibbs Jr. Missed one game earlier this season on the injured list. Only one game with more than four catches. He did that eight times last regular season. Yeah, and Gittins is certainly a guy that the, the Toronto Argonauts would like to get going. His numbers have been down particularly over the course of his last few ball games. So good to see him very involved, at least in terms of targeting tonight. I know he and Kelly have missed out on connecting a couple times, but off to Olet. He's again driving the pile five, six, seven yards after contact. Uh, Curly Gittins in the warm-up, even watching him doing the, the way he runs routes, the way he gets himself open, even on air, just smooth as can be as you see him line it up here and help in the blocking scheme as well. And yeah, bringing Tavares Daniels over from the backside. Again at the point of attack. And there you see Curly Gittins getting his hands on the middle linebacker, Micah Alway. Gittins out of Wilfred Laurier, Derek Wigan on defense out of Queens. Those two teams will play to kick off their U Sports seasons coming up this weekend. Spin move back in the hole. Olet running free inside the 20. Tackled down at the 16 yard line. For a gain of 20 quick yards from AJ Olet. Not really known for the nimble tapping of the toes, but watch this one. And maybe Andrew Harris is influence with that spin move rubbing off on Olette. But the thing I love about this, usually you see that spin go outside. It's not usually the spin back to the inside. And I'm sure that's what completely caught Brandon Dozier off guard as you're anticipating, okay, I gotta keep contained, get that outside leverage. And Olette all of a sudden, with that deceptive quickness, spun it back to the inside on him. Balls for a quick sub. Get Harris in the ball game. Pitch it on the edge for him. He cuts it back inside. Into traffic. And to your point about that spin move being outside in, usually you don't do it. You know better than anybody because uh, there's usually people yeah. waiting there on the inside. This is what it usually looks like when you cut back inside. Yeah, but he recognized the spacing on that one. There you see Brandon Calvert trying to get out front. Converted linebacker. Great special teamer. Calvert forced into duty at fullback. Recent weeks with the injury to rookie Spencer Nichols. 
Calver shifting over to fullback a little bit at the end of last season when the Argos had injury issues at the position. Oh, let the biggest fan right now of Andrew Harris who remains in the ball game. Second down and three. Kelly holds on to it, runs through the middle, gets the first down. And near the goal line, very nearly. Had another running touchdown on the season. He's already got five. And watch how things open up here a little bit. As the routes start to go, Kelly sees a crack, takes it. Gets what he needs to move the sticks. Start from the gun here. Kelly will stay there. They punch down the formation. Kelly decides to keep it. Touchdown, Argos. Half a dozen. For Chad Kelly into the end zone on his feet this year. Just going to go straight up the middle. But you'll see Chad Kelly fake inside. Everybody crashes. Around the corner he goes untouched. I got a hard, hard time believing that Andrew Harris didn't think that one was going to him. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly pulled that real quick and made sure that he ripped it away from 33. Otherwise, Harris was going to grab that and take it to the house himself. And the Argonauts, after the extra point, have a 14-point advantage at home, trying to give the Stamps their third straight loss. And you look back at this play, and you've got the two best defenders, Mike Rose and Titus Wall, best position to defend the edge. But they believe that that ball is going to Andrew Harris up the middle, so they're crashing. As a result, not necessarily great blocks from the Argos, but they make enough contact to occupy those two guys on the inside. Allow Jack Kelly to scoop around the edge for the score. Harris got two, by the way. <laughs> he ended up having contact with both Rose and Wall off the edge. It punctuates an eight-place, 78-yard drive in just four and a half minutes for the Toronto Argonauts. As early here in Q2, they go up by two majors. 14-0, the lead. Calgary looking for a sign of life offensively early on as Bellamy will return this around the left edge. Wrapped up and brought down just shy of the 40-yard line. As Chad Kelly finding a way to get to the end zone early and often this season. The bye weeks, they're all done. Expect much more of that man for the rest of the season. We'd be awesome at that, man. But well, we really would. Especially with me limping around and making you do everything. <laughs> We'd find a way. Big <laughs> Bear sends the receivers in motion. Quick throw, big hit! Held on to it. Driving in was Jamal Peters on former teammate Marky Vambles on that one. A quick shot out to the left. Amble sitting down in space, but Peter's reading that, leaving Marquise Michelle or Mark and Michelle on the outside. The gain of five. Marquise Amble's now a double move over the top. Mark and Michelle down the seam, cuts it back. Can he win the foot race? Touchdown, Stamp Peters. 65 big ones on command. They needed every single inch of it. And it's finally a delivery from Jake Mayer worthy of a major. Yeah, and once again, great recognition, great touch. When you watch Jake Mayer here, in terms of how he delays and holds on to the ball, recognizing he can't panic. He knows what Michelle's doing on that double move, hangs on it again, just drops it in, perfect spacing, perfect timing, over top of the defenders who had bitten on that out move. Well-placed football, and Mark and Michelle does the rest, making a couple of miss on route to the end zone. You watch a throw and catch like that, the timing, the precision. It makes you wonder, how is this offense dead last in the CFL completion percentage? It's 61.4%. When you can do things like this. Yeah, and it's a matter of doing them consistently, quite honestly. And 
up front, making sure that Jake Mayer has the time, feels comfortable in that pocket to stand in and make those kind of throws. No shortage of playmakers. They've added some experience with Michelle and Ambles rejoining the Stampeders for their respective second tours of duty with this team. Those guys are helping get it done. Mark and Michelle, third touchdown since rejoining Calgary. That's how you fucking know, Jay. First four drives, just 34 yards for Calgary on that possession. 70 and then two plays, five yards on first down and 65. Lightning in a bottle. Mark and Michelle, when you dial it up like that, as Jake Mayer admires his work. Stands back, ready to return. He'll get an opportunity from his 10-yard line. Plenty of space up to the 30, but closes up quickly as Kulu Thomas brings him down. First year stamp out of the Okanagan Sun program. Been battling on special teams all year long. Yeah, Thomas, another one of those guys having a little bit of a homecoming tonight. Scarborough guy who went west to play junior football. I love seeing the guys come out of the CJFL. Yeah. Into the CFL. I, if I may editorialize, I wish they were part of the draft. Yep. Quite honestly. Yep. As opposed to that first come, first serve basis on which they join teams typically. Great players. All throughout the CJFL should be included. Kelly goes back to work, rolling to his right, loads it up, comes to the comeback. Accepted for a second time by Nick Taylor. <laughs> and Taylor's running right back at Kelly and telling him, I know exactly where you're going tonight. Yeah, he's, he's definitely reading Chad Kelly's mail on this one, a throw that's going out to the wide side. Kelly shortens that throw, as you see, with that roll to his right. But Taylor doing a nice job getting underneath the intended receiver under him. First incompletion when David Unger, the third, has been targeted this season was 14 of 14. We'll just have to begin again. <laughs> start, over, start over a new streak and flags come up on this one. He gets introduced to Titus Wall. Dickinson waits on the call here. Procedure, Toronto, number 59. Five-yard penalty remains second down. John Allen identified as the guilty party. He disagrees, as do the fans here at BMO. Digs back in at his right tackle spot next to Peter Nicastro. Several University of Calgary Dino products across the offensive line on these teams tonight. Andrew Harris stands alongside Kelly who will look to throw down the field hit. Wobble. Interception of the ball game. Some frustration as Ryan Dinwiddie talks it through with them. On the field is an interception by Calgary. By a ball ball smacked on the throw and came out sideways. Day after 8:24, Kobe takes advantage. Interception, Stan Peters. Julian Hauser from his defensive end spot is the guy who supplies the pressure on this rush. Gets just enough of Kelly to see him kind of hit the left arm, maybe 
cause Kelly's body to over rotate a little bit. This ball gets away from the Argos quarterback. Kobe Williams sitting in comes up with the INT. Ever wonder when you see quarterbacks doing all those silly offseason drills where people are hitting you with pool noodles and tugging you around and towels around the waist and that's why right there. Manipulate the hips, the ball comes out wonky, and it costs the Argonauts here as Calgary goes back to the quick passing attack. It's Mark Heath Hamble making the grab. Red and white for a gain of five. Now we mentioned Amble's former Toronto Argonauts. Came into the lead initially with the Toronto Argonauts, was released by Toronto, went on to have a good run as a starter with Calgary for a few years. Then moved back to Toronto in free agency, now back to Calgary. So, well-traveled, but he's only been to two cities. <laughs> back and forth he goes. Happy to be in Calgary right now with an opportunity, as is Bellamy. Levante. Turtles across to the 30. Let's go down to Matthew with more on the Stampeders receivers. Yeah, guys, I spoke to Nick Lewis before the game, and certainly with all his experience and over 13,000 receiving yards, he said, when I look at my receiving core at this point, even though, yes, Reggie Bagleton was part of that 2018 Great Cup team, I don't have a lot of experience when it comes to CFL receivers. And I've been telling these guys in the over three games since they had a receiving touchdown that the details matter. And, I, and he said to me, I go to these guys every day and say, if I have more say in your potential, think more highly of you than you think of yourself. Well, we know Nick Lewis is colorful language, and I'll just translate. He said, if I think more highly of you than you think of yourself, you have a quote, mother filling problem. And then what after that they, Mark and Michelle, brought the ball into the end zone, the one thing that Nick Lewis went, and again, I'm translating, went up and down to his receivers. He said, guys, let's keep this band going. But he didn't say band, guys. <laughs> That's the John Liu translation, I believe, of the LFG. <laughs> I think we got the picture. Thank you, Matthew. As Deshaun Amos is down on the field. Rolled up on maybe on this one, Dwayne at the end of the play is again trying to get a little slip screen out to Bellamy. Yeah, and they finally connect after a couple of earlier attempts. You see Amos getting bent over backwards as his legs were pinned by a couple of teammates. Yeah, Pickett and Winton McManus, not exactly the guys that you want flying at full speed when you don't see him coming. On the other side as they go to the lower left ankle and take a look there. But to Matthew's point about Nick Lewis and some of those receivers, I thought it was amazing before the game looking at, there's just so many names on the stat sheet already this year for Calgary a receiver, even Trey Odoms Dukes, who's team high 73 targets, not in the lineup here tonight. They have nine players with at least 10 targets at midseason. Yeah, and again, so much of it forced by injuries. Some of it started before the season, obviously Jalen Philpott yet to play for this team, Malik Henry. Had such a fantastic breakout year last year, going over a thousand yards. Went down early. They brought back Mark and Michelle, who had last played for the team in 2018. Had been down in the National Football League for a few years. He was available, knowing the system. Back to help, as you see Nick Lewis providing a little veteran advice over there. There you saw Luther Hakunavanu, one of their young Canadian receivers. But Clark Barnes yeah. was off to a terrific start in his rookie season. Now finds himself on the injured list. The shuffle with Odom's Dukes this week had to happen on offense where they had Bryce Bell, who had been starting at left tackle, the Canadian Wilfred Laurier product, went down. They had to go American at that position. An American receiver came off the roster, Odom's Dukes. Second leading receiver on the yeah. Calgary Stampeders this season behind only Reggie Bagleton finds himself bumped to the practice roster for the week. As we see the cart coming out here from Sean Davis. Let's go down to Matthew with more. What do you got, Matt? Yeah, guys, just to add to what Dwayne was saying, and, and to the point about Reggie Bagleton, certainly he spent a lot of time after 2018 with the Green Bay Packers, and Nick Lewis was mentioning that it's about details with his guys. And you look at the, the week, a couple weeks ago when they beat the Argos in Calgary, he said, I didn't really mind that we didn't score a touchdown. For me, it was about how we were laying out our blocks for the run game. And 
yes they've had some drops in intermediate passes over the last couple of weeks but Nick Lewis has been reinstating to his guys and pointing to Reggie Bagleton even though he may not have the same level given his years in football that you would expect him to have in the CFL but it's about being a pro and for Nick Lewis it's take the color away to take the bombastic personality away for him it's about showing up every day and it's one thing he's been hammering home to his guys if you show up every day if you make sure that you're on your details the touchdowns are going to happen and that's exactly the, I guess what we saw with Mark and Michelle yeah and there's a reason Nick was able to have such a successful career is that it's regardless of what the body type was the position was the team he was he was the same spot the same time open turn knife consistency just absolutely the image of trying to find a way well, and, and a guy who truly understood the game well enough to be able to evolve. Yes. Right? As kick returner coming in. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> I mean, as his, whether you want to say body type changed, Nick heavier later in his career than he was earlier in his career, as many of us were, to be fair. But as well as that, dealing with leg injuries and, and so on, that may have taken half a step away from him. But... Nick was always able to evolve to be productive yeah. as a receiver. And you talk about the blocking piece, absolutely fierce oh, yeah. in that role. This is a, a slot that I saw knock defensive ends out of games with blocks. He took great pride in doing that. I can remember one against Hamilton in a snowy game at McMahon, probably back around 2012-13, where he, at the time where you could crack from the outside in. Greg uh, Peach. Yeah, Greg Peach. And Peach didn't see him coming. Nobody yelled crack. And uh, Nick, we heard the crack. Yeah, Nick Lewis did some damage and didn't even bother with the rest of the play. Just stood there flexing, which on coaches' film, now that he's coaching, might not be something he'll advise that to his players. But may not be one of the details he's <laughs> referring to. Forget about that. But yeah, I mean, it's this receiver conversation. You know, looking tonight, Tyson Middlemost, no catches on the season listed as a starter. You got Floyd Allen, one catch on the season listed as a starter. Mark Keith Amble, this season in Calgary, one catch listed as a starter. It's beside Reggie Begleton, even having Mark and Michelle in for Malik Henry being injured earlier in the season. It is a couple of players that are really trying to hold it down, and that probably goes a long way to explaining some of the offensive struggles Calgary's had as they sit at three and seven on the season. Unofficial running back meeting. Yeah. Mutual respect between Mills, Olet, and Bellamy. Talking things over. You know what they're saying right now? Oh, Bellamy back. and Olet. <laughs> did, did you know that Dwayne Ford wore this number? Hey. That's what they're discussing. 34. Right now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we're all way better than he ever was. Hate <laughs> to see Deshaun Amos. Eastern Carolina, 14 tackles and a couple of interceptions this season, but all over the field and obviously players on both rosters that know his quality here tonight. Just a freak injury for Amos. Caught by friendly fire. Three double blue defenders trying to make a play. Stabilize that lower leg for him and take the utmost safety and security they can to make sure that he's locked in and not going to do any further damage as players come over to wish him well. Including Falarno Remolade, who we had a tremendous conversation with this week, as one of the not just the emotional leaders and statistical leaders on this Argonauts defense, but just an incredibly smart well-spoken human being like I, I well, could that, sit with him and talk for hours about anything well it's that that Ivy League economics degree gives you it a little helps. bit of a, an indication of uh, what kind of guy you're dealing with but yeah fascinating individual and you know as I said a, an economics guy I find some of the, the economics of Arimuade's situation quite interesting it was much publicized when he signed his contract in free agency with Toronto this offseason that he would be the highest paid defensive end yeah. in the league and this was a guy who really hasn't played a lot 34 games he's in his fifth year but only 34 games played through his first four years missed the entire 2019 season due to injury didn't have big numbers but this is the familiarity 
of a coaching staff, particularly Corey Mace, who had worked with the D-line in Calgary, recognizing the potential of this player. And I, I find it fascinating because I have often said, just as a sports fan, and great to see Deshaun Amos sort of saluting the crowd, saluting his teammates as he makes his way off. Let's, uh, let's go down to Matthew with more on Deshaun Amos. In these moments, Marsh, you see so many players go ahead and give their support to, to a player who's had an unfortunate injury like Deshaun Amos just had. But speaking to the guys on the Calgary sideline, a lot of stamps going up to him because during his time in Calgary, he was incredibly well-liked. Yeah, absolutely. You can tell that as we go back to live game action. Quick throw. Completed from Mayor to Begleton. Royce Mechie coming down from his free safety spot. As they'll shuffle the back end with Amos. It looks like... Josh Haggerty, the backup free safety, former sixth round pick out of Sask that checks into the lineup here on the back end and they'll get off the field and force Rennie Parrott as the legend to come out and attempt this one. Well, it can be challenging emotionally at times and particularly in this situation with a player that both teams know so yeah, well. But it can be challenging when you see a serious injury that for everybody it kind of takes you out of your zone for, for a little bit. Get an update from Matthew when we get an opportunity. The flag comes up here on the field goal attempt from Paradis. Sails into the end zone. Words of legendary Flint Tropics broadcaster Dick Pepperfield. One lucky fan will go home with a game ball. Except that he won't. Oh, true. Those, hey, those chip balls. <laughs> you got to give them back. Yeah, the footballs have chips in them. And they'll go over and exchange that for uh, a different ball, maybe a pair of gloves. Just, just don't take the one procedure. Don't take, don't take the, the first defense, offer, buddy. Toronto, too many players lined up on one side of the center. This will be a five-yard penalty. Oh, wow. First down, Calgary. Wow, so that will actually get a fresh set of downs. Yeah, too many players on one side of the center overloading. New rule this season, so that will cost Toronto with the way that they've lined up. Too many players on one side. You see there, Dwayne looks like the right side. Yeah, seven guys lined yep. up over to that right side. Only four to the left. Again, the lead. Not only illegal, but also not pleasing aesthetic. Mayor gets this one out quick. Hakanavanu cuts to the end zone. And Toronto the special teams penalty. Those are some long limbs doing a backflip. Luther Hakanavanu, big touchdown, and I know this one will mean a lot for him. When you think back to the Stampeders game in Winnipeg last week, they lost a close one. Hakanavanu had a draw that would have been a yes. walk into the end zone in that ball game. So for Jake Mayer to go back to him, similar part of the field for him to make that catch in traffic and get into the end zone is big. Jake Mayer trusting it through the slant, even though there was three defenders there. Takanavanu into the end zone. Gets the major. And all of a sudden, this one is knotted up at 14 apiece with 4.21 to go. As you see, Mickey Donovan, special teams coordinator for the Argonauts. And here you're just going to see Luther Hakanavanu. Reggie Begleton. As the under Hakanavanu comes inside his defender, just a quick hitter. Moving into the space that Begleton kind of clears out with his under route. He's leaving Hakanavanu that whole side of the field to go to work. Quick hitter that doesn't really even give the corner stiggers a chance to make a play on the football. And the Edmonton native. Former member of the Edmonton Wildcats. Speaking of former junior players. Comes up with a big grab there. I mentioned New York University product. It's York versus Western at York tomorrow as U Sports football gets underway. I wonder why the purple made an appearance here tonight. U Sports season is back. Six plays, 43 yards. Ends off with a Luther Hakanavanu touchdown. Calgary fighting their way back in. The second quarter. 
Jake Bears got one to Mark and Michelle and now one to Hockenavanu. Two touchdown passes after having a touchdown pass direct for a while. There it is. Knocks the football out. It's loose in Toronto. It's back on top. Brandon Calver will recover as Paredes, not really interested in tackling, uh, but got a shoulder up in there. <laughs> Javon Leak and him have a conversation. Uh, in fairness, Paredes just bringing up the rear here. Three special teams tackles already for the Stampeder kicker this season. And this time gets the shoulder right on the football to pop it out. Stamps unable to come up with the rock. Toronto trying to answer before the half ends here. Quick hitter to the outside, incomplete. Locked away that time off the hands of Cam Phillips. Okay. Chad Kelly just telling his receiver to shake it off. Get ready for the next one. Best team in the CFL at converting on second and seven plus. Ryan Dinwiddie's Toronto Argonauts. 39.7% of the time, they move the chains in this down in distance. Four man rush. Kelly stands in. Plenty of time. Flips it out. Oh, let's get room. A cut back. Heads to the sideline. Gets the first down. Watch how nobody goes with the lead as he leaves the backfield. He was wide open right from the very start of this play. But Kelly's got to get through his reads before he looks to the back out in that flat. Kelly well, looks to throw again, tries to come back to a curl right on the outside in front of Trey Roberson. Monte Coxie makes the grab that time. That's, I guess, one way to go after the corners that have been frustrating Chad Kelly throughout the night between Taylor and Roberson here is you end up mixing and matching, sending some running backs out for him, try and confuse him. The offense for the Argonauts. A little pitch and catch for Coxy. 14 all. We've hit the three minute warning. Coming up at the half, the Argos backfield. The comeback from Calgary, and someone on the panel thought that he could get away Happy all night with him telling us that it's his you. birthday. Happy 87, JB. I didn't know you were 87. I didn't know wow. that. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Mayhem back in studio. The celebration on there. We'll check in with Kate and the panel coming up inside three minutes remaining here in the first half. Kelly with a fresh set of downs after the three minute warning. It's hit hard on this one. Throwing away. Mike Rose right there with the pressure. Yeah, absolutely a throwaway there for the Argos quarterback. Mike Rose. Little delay and then after reading it closing in. Kelly recognizing he was surrounded by white and red jerseys. Just does his best to protect the field position and get rid of that ball. Rose giving a lot of credit this week to the players around him and giving him some freedom on this defensive line that's been getting home a lot. Kelly this time on second down and long completes it. It'll be short. The yardage required. We'll see a decision made here from Dinwiddie. It looks like he will send out Boris Beattie in the kicking unit. Uh, you mentioned Mike Rose in that defensive line. Interesting for them to have Mike Moore now in that starting lineup. Yeah. Veteran guy comes over from Montreal in free agency. Previously spent some time in Ottawa and Edmonton. But a guy who could play inside and outside. You think about some of the flexibility that that provides. Maybe an opportunity to, to free up Mike Rose occasionally for the edge rush. BD lines this one up. 38 yards away. 93% on the season. Add to the tally here as Toronto retakes the lead. Rose on being a defensive lineman in Calgary.
Yeah. Being a D lineman, there's a lot of weed before me. Like, you got to keep the linebackers clean. You got to take on full bags. It's a lot of dirty work. And a lot of guys think, oh, we're just out here trying to get sacks. We all want sacks, obviously. But how we get sacks is a combination of us working together. Because it takes all four to get one sack. Whether, whether people know that or not. You could be a guy with a great move, but if the DN decides to run up the field or go inside, then he can run right through the B gap. So it, it all definitely takes all four. Everybody pieced it together on that Stamps front four on the season. Now some pressure on from Toronto. Check down underneath. Good rallying from the Argonauts defense as well as a Darius Pickett there to finish it off. But speaking of team efforts. Yeah, it starts up front. Take a look at the work of the D line here. Getting the heat on Jake. Darius Pickett. Dropping into coverage and then closing quickly. Make that play for the Montreal Alouette who moved a few hours west in free agency. Certainly having an impact with his new team. Robertson Daniel did a little friendly fire that time. Sean Oakman is every flag on the field up right here. Looks like the offensive line for the Stampeders. Procedure, Calgary number 67. Five yard penalty, repeat the down. Back him up into that difficult second and seven plus down in distance once again for Calgary. in there. Just got caught leading a little bit early. Fairly clean sheet between both sides here tonight in terms of penalties. A couple on special teams have been really costly. As this one underneath and fighting for the first down. They'll have it. That is Cole Tucker making the grab at a Northern Illinois. Nice job here picking up the blitz. Diedrich Mills stands in there in the gap. Just allowing Jake Bear to go to work. Cole Tucker. First round pick for the staff leaders this year. Check down underneath doesn't go for much there. He was an interesting one around combine time where he came up, interviewed with the teams, didn't end up going through the whole combine, but because it was everybody had seen his pro day numbers and all the rest, and Calgary was extremely excited to be able to pick him up in the first round, maybe knowing that Jalen Philpott was going to be down at the start of the season. As Philpott still yet to play so far this season. You know Jake Mayer would love to have him in the lineup. Mayer makes a check. At the line of scrimmage with the clock rolling inside a minute 20. Over the top into traffic. And fits it into the window. Marquis Vambles on the other end. Again, love the fearlessness of the receiver on this play. Marquis Vambles. He knows he's going into traffic. Look at that. Three blue jerseys closing on him from different directions. Big, big play for his quarterback, and Jake Mayer needed that. 17-yard gain. Mayer wants more now. Loads it up on a corner. Red flipping back. Tucker! Oh, he nearly had it. The scramble rules were on that time from Mayer to Tucker. Calgary nearly had their third passing touchdown of the first half. And Mayer doing a nice job recognizing that he's got an opportunity to escape the pocket there. And it looked like Tucker had a pretty clean shot at that one. Just misjudged it coming in. Royce Mechie right there on the coverage. Fifth year man out of Guelph. Got just enough. Another former Stampeder. Taken in the third round, 25th overall by the Stamps. They'll stare down Jake Mayer here on second and ten. Has to be a quick draw. Stampeders. They're going down by a couple of touchdowns early in this one. Battle their way back to take the lead before halftime. Watch for Begleton coming in from the right side of your screen. And look at how open the middle of the field is. 
in behind Winton McManus. Hegarty, the free safety, loses his footing, and Begleton is home free. Seven plays, 70 yards, and just a minute 29. Just felt like when they sped things up, they got more comfortable offensively as Begleton into the end zone. The only veteran, as we talked about earlier on in this quarter, holding things down for the Stamps receiving core. And you're kind of looking at open space in behind here. Reggie Begleton is the inside receiver on this play, and he's going to work into that space. Nobody really comes to cover it. Haggerty, the free safety, the closest man. He loses his feet trying to get there, and Begleton is off to the races. Nick Lewis absolutely loves it. Leaning on Mark and Michelle and Reggie Bout to try and get some of these other receivers up to speed. That's good coach's tape right there. Easy to watch, break down, and understand. Well, Nick always loved a good celebration. Yes. Over in question. A couple of big plays there from his Calgary Stampeder receivers. Lewis there. We were talking about the defensive line with Mike Rose earlier. Juwan Simpson running that group as well. Former middle linebacker, long time for the Stamps. Dave Dickinson and John Hoffnagel keeping it in the family. In Calgary is Javon Lake and the Argonauts. Trying to strike back here and end the first half with a little bit more excitement. And a couple of big blocks. On this one from Javon Leak's kickoff return unit. Leak feeling it a little bit. Getting up from that. Holding that right foot. That's nothing serious. He's been explosive for them throughout the season. Three touchdowns in the return game. He's been a game changer. All over the field when he touches it. Kelly loads it up. Down the field. Touchdown, Argos. DeMonte Coxey. 67 yards. And Toronto retakes the lead just seconds after Calgary ripped it away from them. Uh, and this is one of the things that through the first part of this season has stood out to me about Chad Kelly as a young quarterback in the league. His resilience. It seems like no matter what goes wrong, what mistakes may have been made earlier, he just he comes back and with tremendous poise and makes big plays there with a big hit closing on him from Cam Judge. He knows Coxie's about to come open deep, hangs in as long as he can to make that throw and puts it on the money. And the Argos right back in the lead. Vintage. CFL final three minutes usually it's the second half but here at the end of the first playing shot for shot between the Stamps and Argos coming into tonight Chad Kelly was completing 58 percent of his passes on throws of 20 yards or more that's unheard of and it's because of toughness like this standing in yeah it really is you watch at Amy Berglund bears down he steps up he knows pressure's coming from the back side but sees Coxey running free. And puts this show right on, this throw right on the money. Coxey in stride, making his presence felt in a big way in his return after a three game injury absence. showing that unlike the first matchup between these two teams they'll fight their way back in regardless of what Jake Mayer and the Stampeders offense continues to throw at them. There's 38 seconds left in the first half. 
Brings it back out to the 30-yard line. Monte Bellamy right there is Jack Kassar, former Carlton linebacker, into the fray. Coming up with the half, it's Kate Miltz, the birthday boy. <laughs> Dave Naylor on the panel, breaking this one down for you, looking around the CFL. Uh, listen, I'm just hoping with the number of candles on that cake that the fire department is on alert. See if Calgary's got a 34 second answer. <laughs> what else can they throw into the mix here at the end of the first half? You know that back end right now for the Argonauts is going, okay, let's settle this one down and try to find our way to the locker room with a lead. We've got it back, three points, 24-21. Nair looks to his left, comes back right, and just skips it into the dirt. Old Tucker looked like he was walking downfield. The Argonauts bench wanted Legal block down field before the ball came out, but Mayor saying he threw it behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and I think part of the thinking for Jake Mayer here, quite frankly, is it is about time if they want to try and run another play to try and try and get the ball into field goal position for Rene Paredes before the end of this first half instead of scrambling around because it looked like there may have been an opportunity for him to keep dancing and try and make something happen. But he just kind of says, this one's done. Let's not make a mistake trying to force something. Live to fight one more good play. Right down that half on second down. Kill a little bit of clock here. So second down and long spot for the Stampeders offense. Good to see him back out on the field after getting that right foot looked at previously. <laughs> He's asking for some substitutions here. Yeah, because, Calgary sent the offense yeah. back out. I'm not sure Javon Leak wanted to play free safety here to end, end the first half, but as they whistle it in, looks like the clock will roll and Leak won't get another touch. I'll have to snap it. The play clock down to 10, the game clock at 12, so about a two and a half second difference. Inside handoff for the old arm punt, throw it down the sideline as far as you can. The extra deep drop. Send it. Up and out of bounds, safely well executed by the Calgary Stan Peters to end the first half without giving the always dangerous Javon Leak another attempt at returning a punt. Back and forth they go between Toronto and Calgary. A matchup that they dearly won is Chad Kelly. Resilient as ever. A running touchdown early on, ripping it away from Andrew Harris and showing the arm strength that we knew he had when they named him starter. Yeah, well, I know the, the crew in the studio dumped him swag early in the season, and he definitely brings some of that to the table, and it rubs off on those around him. Look, no, no situation rattles this guy. Let's set it down to Matthew Shinetti, who is with Chad Kelly. Chad, I have to ask you, I understand how tough it is, the execution. Most people will never understand the details, but what are you seeing from your team? When a team pushes back, your team always seems to have an answer. Yeah, I think guys just have a higher sense of urgency. Um, they heighten their awareness, but I gave them two right there. We got we to gotta get, get back in the locker room, decide what we want to do, and, uh, you know, figure it out in the second half. Less than a minute to go, Coxy finds himself free. Take us through that play and that throw. Yeah, uh, you know, he just ran straight down the middle, gave him something at the top, and, uh, you know, he kind of wor worked it out in practice, knew I'd have to beat the D end, and uh, it was a great job by everybody to execute the play. I know you well enough to know you'll be calm and still intense, but what is the message going to be in the locker room knowing that you've got a team on the other side that's ready to fight? Uh, just convert when the plays are there to be made and stay ahead of the sticks like we're doing and uh, take care of the football. Thanks for this. Go Argos. Well, Kate, we have a heck of a game here on Friday night. That we do, Matthew. What a tremendous evening, a great game, a great crowd down at BMO yes. Field, and we have ourselves a 24-21 lead for the home team right now. Back alongside Dave Naylor, Jim Barker, the birthday boy, and Milt Stiegel. By the way, that's happening all night long. Now, uh, birthday Jim. boys! Yeah, we let you go at the beginning of the game and not now. But let's talk about Chad Kelly for a moment because we've seen the good Chad, but we've seen a little bit of bad Chad. He's got the two TDs, the two INTs, and 247, but his team on top at this point. Yeah, and we haven't seen a lot of bad Chad over the course 
course of the first half of the season. That's one of the things for a guy who hadn't played a lot of football for this season. You think he's going to make some bad throws. He's going to make some bad decisions. There hasn't been a whole lot of that. And Chad Kelly, make no mistake, is a guy who can make plays that not a lot of quarterbacks in this league can make. Like this one where he gets flushed out of the pocket, resets himself, and finds Andrew Harris inside the 10-yard line. That sets up a touchdown on the next throw. And here's the big one where he finds Coxie deep, sees him downfield, even though he's looking to the flat. As you heard him just tell Matthew Sinetti, beats the DN. That's what he knew he had to do. Stays composed and makes that throw. But we saw a little bit of bad Chad here. There we are early in the game. The crowd's fired up. They're marching down the field like a hot knife through butter. He makes a poor throw. That should have been seven points for the Argos. Instead, it's the first turnover of the game. And here, a play where he gets his body twisted. He still decides to make the throw. And this is really why the Stamps are in this. You look at these two offenses, you think if it's just going to be an exchange of possessions, Jim, the Argonauts are going to win this game. The way the Argos can get Calgary back into it is making some mistakes. Yep. And Chad made a couple in the in the first half. Yeah, and, and these Argos, early on when they did have success, when they were able to move the ball, a big reason had to be to play their running backs. And it's great to have one good running back, but when your backup running back is a future Hall of Famer, the best running back who's ever been Canadian in this league, that also helps out a lot. And I talked to Andrew Harris when we were out in Halifax, and he says, does he like his role? Of course not, but he accepts it. He understands that this is the best for the team. He understands that they have a great running back, but when he gets his opportunities, he's going to take full advantage of them. And we've seen he's done that in the first half. So it's great having these two guys. Both of them have similar styles. They're both great out of the backfield catching the ball. They're also both great in, in, in blocking for the quarterback. So they're going to have to continue getting them in the game. They kind of went away from them, but I think Coming out in the second half, give them the ball early on. You have more success maybe than you did in the first half. Well, it, it was a great first half. The Argos have some issues now in the secondary with the Sean Amos getting hurt. They made a decision during the week to dress eight defensive linemen and no no backups except for uh, Haggerty and uh, Eduardo in the secondary, which are two Canadian players that haven't played. Haggerty's been on the sixth game. He hadn't played at all. On this first touchdown, they go right at the Mechie spot. At, he's moved into halfback where Amish played. Haggerty was on the other side. That's him missing the tackle there. And then on the this next uh, touchdown play. Again, that's Haggerty in the middle. He just hasn't played. Again, I'm not picking on the guy. This was a decision made. They chose to dress. They had Costigan, Barlow, and Flo as defensive ends. They tr chose to dress all three of those instead of dressing Tavares McFadden, which mm -hmm. would have given them another American right. defensive back, right. and they could have kept everything else as is. Now, Mechie's playing a new position, and Haggerty's playing there. So this could be a big problem. Mm. Obviously, Calgary sees it, and they are going after it, and it's going to be interesting to see if the Argos make some kind of an adjustment at halftime to make up for it. I mean, hindsight's really easy. I mean, you weren't expecting injuries, obviously, but you're right now looking back on it instead of having backups for your defensive line. Clearly having someone in the yeah, backfield ready yep. to go yep. might have been ideal. Meanwhile, the Toronto Argonauts still with the lead. They're up by three after the break. We're going to show you some wrestling moves. We've been practicing all night. <laughs> Friday night football here in Toronto as we see lots of people out enjoying and lots of gold. Calgary Stampeders fans out here enjoying the uh, work of Reggie Begleton throughout the first half of this football game as the veterans stepped up in a big way. Yeah, Reggie Begleton is one of the guys that obviously they're going to lean on offensively for Calgary. They've kind of challenged their receivers. We talked about it in the first half. Nick Lewis pushing his group. 
to pay attention to their details. Workman like all business, Reggie Bagleton leading the way in that regard, Marshall. Let's hear from Reggie Bagleton. He's at field level with Matthew Shinetti. Reggie, certainly offense is on the offering tonight. How did you guys approach this game knowing that against a team like that in the Argos that there might be a lot more expectation for you guys to get the ball in the end zone? I mean, all year has been us against us. Uh, for us to come out here and execute like we did, I mean, it builds a lot of confidence, but we know what we can do, and, and we showed ourselves that we could do it. What's been the messaging from Nick Lewis? I spoke to him pregame. He talked about you being a pro, having the guys approach the game meticulously to see you and Mark and get the ball into the end zone, and Luther as well. Well, does it say you guys are being patient and executing when it matters? Yeah, yeah. You, every day you go in, you got to pick something that you want to work at, and that's what we do at practice. Practice could be mundane, but as long as you, you go out there and, and, and focus on the little things, it will show in the game. Consistency is key. Ready for more offense? Absolutely. Thanks for this. Thank you. So are we, Matthew, as we get the Calgary Stampeders offense back on the field to kick things off here in the third quarter. Jake Mayer finishing with some fireworks at the end of that first half. Up and down the field he went, and it's a, one of those things where, okay, now you go back, you maybe be a little bit more methodical, but maybe you want to go fast, considering what you did at the end of the second quarter. Yeah, exactly. Coming up with a couple of big plays, maybe getting that Argo defense off balance, particularly with that shuffling taking place in the secondary after the injury to Deshaun Amos. We've seen Royce Mechie slide over to play the field halfback spot, usually occupied by Amos. Josh Haggerty comes into Mechie's spot at free safety. Moving and shaking on the back end, and right down the pipe once again. It's Diedrich Mills keeping a hand on the ground and rolling his way all the way out. For an 18-yard gain up to the 54-yard line of the yard. And the Calgary Stampeders are just showing off their depth at the running back position with the always dangerous Kadeem Carey out of the lineup. Diedrich Mills proving to be absolutely no drop-off. Again, over 130 yards for him the first time these two teams met a Calgary win. 11 carries coming into tonight. He had 27 alone in that ball game, and that right there is why gains on first down, setting them up for success on second. Because this San Peter's team, just seventh best out of the nine teams in the CFL, converting on second down at any down and distance. Yeah, pounding away offensively. Kind of classic Calgary Stamp Peter football, leading on that run game. See what they do here with the playbook wide open on second and two. Dickinson takes a look at what the Argonauts have sent out as Rodine Brown gets himself settled, an extra offensive lineman. Comes up, play action on second and two. Take a shot down the sideline, wide open, into the end zone. Touchdown Calgary, who else? It's Reggie. Seven-yard touchdown as Montez Stiggers looks on confused at how Begleton got behind again. And clearly confusion in the Toronto Argonaut secondary. The Calgary Stampeders take advantage. Extra offensive lineman in, fullback in to help with protection. That gives Mayer the time to load it up. And throw the ball. Let's go! Calgary Stampeders in the vertical passing attack. Started the season out really focusing on and wanted to prove to themselves that they could take those deep shots and make them pay off. It's faded over the last month or so of the CFL season, but it is back in a big way. Thanks to that man, Reggie Begleton, into the end zone. Calgary back on top. Welcome inside BMO Field 28-24, the third lead change of the ball game. If you're watching the Canadian Women's Open on TSN 1, welcome to the show. Reggie Begleton is Quantez Stiggers Dwayne jumping this one, and Begleton taking advantage. Yeah, and you can see Stiggers, his entire body language, the, the way his head was, was turned on that one. John Huffnagel, Stan Peters president, loving that one. High fives all around up in the box. But Stiggers... Looking towards the backfield, I don't know if he was expecting the running back to release to the flat. Don't know 
if he's confused about the coverage, thinking he was taking flat, somebody else was going to help him over top. But Begleton just ran by him. A little easy pitch and catch with his quarterback, Jake Mayer. Hard to know what the rules were, what Stickers thought he was seeing, what coverage they were in, but obviously, the wires crossed on that one, and it cost Toronto big as the offense for the Argonauts has to answer back with Chad Kelly at the helm as they unpile out of the special teams tackle as there is Deshaun Amos back on the bench wearing a cast on that left ankle foot. Unfortunate to see him dinged up. Super talented field halfback for the Argonauts. And as we said when he was injured earlier, connections to both these franchises, but good to see these in good enough spirits to be on the sideline, I guess, at the very least. Yeah, exactly. No doubt there are more tests to come for Deshaun Amos, but wants to be and is able to be with his teammates at this time, which is a great thing to see. And Kelly in the offense begins as they so often do on the ground. Oh, that bounces off Julian Hauser. You don't see that very much. It doesn't go for much of a game. But a physical attempt from Olette. What else would you expect? Yeah, and an indication of just how strong he is on his feet. This time the spin. Less of a, an elusive move, but just off contact. Help is on the way. Isaac Adayami Berglund. Wrapping up the Argos running back. Argonauts call running plays more than 50% of the time on first down. Only team in the CFL that does that. Kelly looking to throw on second. Over the top corner route and just missed it. Great coverage that time from Brandon Dozier, the free safety, forcing the issue as Cam Phillips couldn't get to it. I see you trying to make it. And no shortage of aggressiveness from the Toronto Argonauts in terms of their response here. So we'll get a great look at Chad Kelly. Trying to throw that corner to his left, trying to hit that window between the corner Taylor and the free safety Dozier, but just out of reach of Cam Phillips. St. Peter's defense not going to make it easy on Kelly to fit this in as Beatty once again filling in with the punting responsibilities. Gets this one away barely, the long limbs. Big boot of Morris Beatty. That time it goes for 57 yards. He had a 60-yarder earlier in this ball game as well. Let's so we get a look at Jake Mayer in his first half of action, coming in leading the Canadian Football League with nearly 2,400 yards of passing. I, uh, I think, I think he's extended his lead based on the explosive Certainly passing. Adding to that, some big plays, four touchdown passes in this one. Mark and Michelle got it started. Then he hits Luca Hockenwater, coming underneath. Reggie Begleton across the middle. That gave the Stampeders a late lead before halftime. The Argos would come back and retake the lead. Jake doesn't care as he opens the third quarter, going over the top to Begleton again. Stamps up by four on four Jake Bear TD passes. This time, Pump looking over the top, now checking it down as he gets hammered. They were looking for Begleton once again as they just did on the home run shot. This one would have been a shorter game, but incomplete pressure coming from the blind side that time on there. Yep. Mayor standing in there. You're going to see it We're coming off screen on the right. Roberts and Daniel on the blitz. He is absolutely cramming the stat sheet here in 2023. <laughs> 50 tackles, two sacks, a forced fumble, four interceptions, four knockdowns, two fumble recoveries, one tackle for loss. If it's a stat on defense, he's got it. Mayer on second and ten, trying to get away. Skips away from the pressure for now, looks downfield, and then skips it just short of Cole Tucker. That will send out the punting unit led by Cody Grace. Yeah. Looks like Mayer may have, may have had a shot once he, once he manages to escape the pocket here. Sliding to the outside, but never really gets his shoulder squared downfield to throw that football, comes up short. Looking to Tucker along that sideline. They're just unable to complete that one. Almost throws you work on all offs. 
postseason for moments like that. He'll want it back, no doubt, when he sees it again. But now it's Javon Leap on a 57-yard punt, catches it in his own 20, gets to the wide side, crosses the 30, the 40, now the 50, and stumbles his way across the 55. No flags down on the play, a 37-yard return. Javon Leap slow up onto his feet, but another explosive return for Javon Lee at the annual CNE game here at Hemo Field. Javon Leak, who's been dominant in the return game throughout this season. That's a couple big blocks, just gives a little ground to get to that outside. Massive field position changing play for Mickey Donovan's special teams unit. Leak leading the way, a couple of nice blocks. The rest of the crew out there. You see, he's in tremendous company having already tied the single season Argos record for punt return TDs. Flea flicker here from the Argonauts to open the drive. More fireworks! Tavares Daniels, touchdown Argos! A flick of the flea for 54, and Toronto. Strikes back. Well, they got the look they wanted. Keep an eye on the free safety. Brandon Dozier deep in the middle of the field. You're going to see the run fake to a left. He pauses for a second. Two steps forward. That's just enough for Devaris Daniels to get in behind him for his fourth touchdown in the last two games. And it's the Argos back in the lead. Fourth lead change of this ball game. We talked about it so much coming in, Dwayne. Calgary, Toronto, how similar they are, how much they know each other, these coaching staffs. Don't you get the sense at this point it's just Dinwiddie looking down the sideline at Dickinson and going, oh yeah? yeah? And then Dickinson, Pat Del Monaco, and Mark Mueller going to Dinwiddie, oh yeah? Back and forth trying to outdo each other. And here you're going to see Devaris Daniels straight up the field. Angling slightly towards the post. Starts it off. You saw that sort of stock block look and then takes off. The second he knows he's got the safety sneaking up. And you saw that oh shoot moment <laughs> from Brandon Dozier. Well, <laughs> what felt like it might have been in the highlight pack the start of the second quarter feels like it was three hours ago <laughs> at oh this God, point 31 oh 28 oh oh so i gotta say as well watching the receivers warm up at the start of the game every single receiver has a different handshake just like that from the argonauts for each other i have no idea how they remember the ball about 15 guys quarterbacks running backs receivers out there they know each other extremely well. They told us a few short weeks ago, they kind of bow down to the love they have in that locker room for each other, just appreciate the fact that they get to have fun, they're winning football games, and they're enjoying doing it. Yeah, working for each other. Work to get each other open, blocking for each other, whatever it takes. Turn this time from the 10-yard line. It's Bellamy bouncing across on a little jump cut. All the way out to the 37. It's Jake Mayer. What do you got? Well, this is it. The, the back and forth. And this one has just turned into a good old fashioned track meet. I think it's up to Dave Dickinson and the Stampeders to decide if that's what they want it to continue to be. They've had some offensive success playing that game. I'm just not sure how well they match up with the Argos in that kind of game. We shall see. Interesting. They've leaned into it so far, but you're right as the clock rolls here towards the middle of the third quarter. Are they content to play that way for the remainder? Or do they switch it up? Begin here with a quick pitch to the outside. Bagleton in space, and he brings two tackles. Now a third. Finally wrapped up. Winton McManus has to finish it off. 
Yeah, great second effort. Salvages a play that looked like it was going to go for negative yards for the Calgary Stampeders. Bagleton lined up as a tight end here. You see him swing back behind the line of scrimmage. What a fancy footwork makes Robertson Daniel miss and lets him get a feel. Inside run picks up the first down after the Begelton quick pass on first down went for eight. So we'll move the sticks. Bellamy checks in. Begelton gets the rare rest. Most of the running he's been doing tonight hasn't been to the sideline. And what this substitution creates is the two American running backs in the backfield. So I'll be curious to see what Calgary comes with formation wise and in terms of play call here. How does Toronto answer it as well? Jordan Williams, Winston McManus, the Darius Pickett, they'll bunch to the bottom of your screen. Go with a running play inside using Dedrick Mills as a lead blocker for Bellamy. Stacked up by that front four. Aided by Robbie Smith to finish it off. Levante Bellamy. We mentioned earlier the Western Michigan star. This was a guy who in 2018 kept a freshman running back by the name of Chase Brown of London, Ontario on the bench. Brown, Brown got plenty of touches. He was the number three rusher on that team, but he transferred to Illinois after that year to join his brother Sydney with the Fighting Illini and went on to lead the NCAA a year ago before being drafted into the NFL. This one incomplete and Mark Heath Ambles gets smashed by Adarius Pickett. Six on six that time. Pops back onto his feet. And Pickett bringing the physicality as ever as he did last year in Montreal. Yeah, here you see those sixes coming from opposite directions. Ambles still trying to keep that ball alive behind him. And Pickett reminds him, you better watch where you're going. Good, fast, physical football here tonight. On top of all the vertical passing and the points on the board, we've seen a couple of huge hits. Guys getting their heads on the right side, taking care of each other while playing hard. We crossed the midway point of the CFL season. Great to see everyone in rhythm. This one hangs high. Cody Grayson run right down the field after his own as Brandon Dozier in a foot race to the sideline with Javon Lee. They slide out of bounds. Leak has a laugh. The CNE continues to roll outside, but the fireworks are inside. Get in here. Well, he came into tonight with a 70% completion rate when targeted Demonte Coxie, a great explosive downfield player with more on him. Here's Matthew Shinetti. We often forget, Marshall, that there are so many players in the CFL who are so far from home, and in their journey in this league, they choose the symbols that will connect them back to the places and the people that they love the most, and Demonte Coxie certainly does that. Every single day, he walks into his locker, and there is a little jacket that is there, and that is to represent his one-year-old son, Malachi, who, who turns two in February, and I asked Coxie before the game what that jacket means to him. Not only does it mean home and his son, it means everything that he does. And we look at the amazing play that he had before halftime, and I asked him, what's your message to your son? He said simply, I love you, Malachi. Everything I do here is for you. Amazing. Thank you, Matthew. Yeah, the love of home, we don't talk about it a lot in this league, but the, the love still holds them near to all of the people that are watching back at home to get a chance to be able to watch on CBS Sports Network. And, all over this country as well for the Canadian players that are playing from coast to coast away from home. So great to see that hanging in the locker, a little bit of messaging. And never forget what you're playing for, that's for sure. What and who you're playing yes. for. Yes. Absolutely. Chad Kelly, second and five, looks to throw, gets it out. Cam Phillips makes a man miss. Stiff arm on Mike Alway and steps out of bounds at the 39-yard line. effort there from Cam Phillips. Perhaps an answer to Reggie Bagleton's second effort play a few minutes ago. They're fighting to keep the middle linebacker off him. Hit him with a little Heisman. 
hard run there from Phillips. Sometimes wonder how many of these receivers could play running back if they were a little thicker like this guy right up through the middle of the tackles. Andrew Harris moving the pile with a little help from his friends. Yeah, the veteran Harris. Let's take a look at the work of this offensive line. A couple of Calgary Dinos playing side by side. Darius Sirocco at center. Peter Nicastro, the right guard, trying to fight his way up to second level. You know, and every reason to believe that this O line is going to get better. When you look really at the limited number of games of experience of the members of this group, still very much growing. Harris turning the legs, trying to get there. He'll be just short. Wonder if they go here at short yardage. Yeah, Ryan did what he did talk to us this week about the offensive line gelling, getting more reps together, being better. Since Ryan Hunter, he said it was a big turning point when they got him on the roster to add some depth and skill, some movable pieces, as he's obviously unhappy not being able to convert on second down in a couple of yards, and he won't go for it here, backed up in his own end. They didn't get enough to make it a threat. And not getting it there, but, it, you know, we talk about that offensive line. You mentioned Hunter. Like, this just his 14th game in the CFL. Isaiah Cage has battled injuries. Only his 17th game. Nicastro missed last year. Just his 20th game. A young group in terms of experience. Well, down here on the return is a 47-yard punt. We'll sort it out for you on the other side. Reggie Begleton having himself a night just like he did in Toronto last season in a game that saw Bo Levi Mitchell go to the bench and Jake Mayer become the starter here in Toronto. For Begleton, it doesn't matter who's delivered. Time now for your Coors Light moment of chill. And contrary to what many of you wanted, it's not Dwayne Ford turning the four-pound taco from the first quarter into a one-pound taco during halftime. No, it is indeed Mickey Donovan, the special teams coordinator of the Toronto Argonauts. A nervous night for him. Really stressed, breaking down the film, evaluating in real time. That's his daughter in with the dance team here tonight. Yes, ner nervous moments for Mickey Donovan. Argo special teams coach, former President's Trophy winner, is the top defensive player, Canadian University football. But I can assure you, not the best dancer in his family. <laughs> I mean, we don't we don't know, right? <laughs> we'll see whether the Argonauts stay undefeated here at home, move to five and zero oh, if they win this back and forth battle. Maybe we'll find out from. Uh, Mickey's dancing skills, but great to see the family involved and so many families out here tonight at the CNE game. Maybe the best seat in the house right now, other than us, Dwayne, is the, the people in the trolleys outside with a little look through the end zone. There's this one, a little, little hesitant handoff that time for Mayer. Wasn't really sure on the exchange with Bellamy. Bellamy held on to it just enough to pick up a gain of about six on the play. And Stan Peters keeping the running backs fresh as they usually do, usually dressing. Two true RBs. Well, when you get his share of touches tonight, along with Dietrich Mills from the backfield. They're on second down and four. Pressure look from the Argonauts. They send it to the outside. He goes right to the sticks. Reggie bounces away from one. Seeing him fighting for yards after the catch reminds me of the uh, the the watch bet between uh, Reggie Bengleton <laughs> yeah. and Sean Payne of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders about who has more yards after catch at the end of the season. He wants that watch. Yeah, that sideline. Standing in the way of Reggie in a new timepiece. <laughs> but nonetheless, happy to get the first down for his Stampeders. Three minutes remaining in quarter three. Calgary has stuck with Toronto, something not many teams have been able to in the third quarter of play so far this season. As this one completed once again, a little check down outside. Looks like Jones made the tackle that time on Bellamy, but the Toronto Argonauts, <laughs> massive point advantage. 57 points for just 22 against in the third quarter this season. Dwayne, they're first in the CFL point differential in quarter three by 17 points against the rest of the league. They've been great coming out of the locker room. Yeah, you certainly get a sense of where they have been putting games away. And then just choking people out in that fourth quarter. 
The Stampeders not going to give, give them a chance to go into that closeout mode just yet. Looking down the field again, it's Bagleton! Did he hang on to it? He sure did. He got one, he got two, and he's gone fishing. Reel it in, Reggie. Add another one to the highlight reel. Once again, they are standing in the pocket. Waiting, waiting, and then just putting that perfect touch on the ball to drop it over top. With the defender this time, Darius Bowman, or Pickett. Stampeders might have wanted to go hurry up there, given that the catch maybe wasn't all that convincing. See if they go back to Bagleton for another major little pump on the outside, looking for the corner at Mark and Michelle. This one going a little bit too skinny up the field, away from Michelle, but nine catches, 183 yards on the night for Reggie Bagleton. That's a new season high for him. Previously, 141 yards receiving. Take another look at the big play that moved Calgary into this field position. Gotta love the fishing celebration. Bengalton is movement on the offensive line here left hand side procedure Calgary number 60 five yard penalty remains second down so left tackle Dante Demery left tackle out of his stance early Second and 15. Big play for the Calgary Stampeders right here. Big play for the Toronto Argonauts as well. Holding on to a three-point lead at the end of the third quarter. Down the middle again. Over the top. Into the end zone and it rolls away. For what seems like the first time all night, Begleton wasn't able to finish the job, but man, they have found something down the middle of the field with Pengleton. Well, they sure have. Then Mayer puts it in the only spot he can. Pengleton in behind the safety. Got it. Josh Haggerty. And interesting to note, by the way, is Calgary kind of attacks the middle of the field with some shuffling that's gone on in the Toronto secondary. Bear in mind, for much of the year, Toronto has dressed an extra American DB in Tarveris McFadden. In this game, they decided to dress an extra D lineman, Brandon Barlow, anticipating defending the run a little bit more. They wanted to dress a little bit heavier lineup. They have a starting DB go down. Now another DB goes down. And you're shuffling that lineup. You've got multiple people playing out of position. But just a, an indication of sometimes how the limited roster in the CFL can create headaches for coaches. Haggerty getting looked at as defensive coordinator Corey Mace looks on. Jonathan Edward would be the next in out of Carlton. Play that free safety spot with Royce Mechie already moving down to replace the injured Deshaun Amos. an American who got national status by virtue of playing three years of university football at Carleton. There's to be a shoulder injury there for the former Saskatchewan Husky, Josh Haggerty. I need to see that. He is, last night you see Mark Antoine Dupois going crazy with the range that he has at free safety. It's kind of the same model, I think, that Toronto would love to see Haggerty turn into. is just a playmaker that can read it, have the eyes jump routes, cover from sideline to sideline. But for right now, an injury concern, so Edward will step in. Field goal attempts coming from Rene Paredes. Go to the bench and talk things through defensively about who's going to line up where and what they feel comfortable doing defensively. 
Edward does have some playing time this year. Just one defensive tackle, seven special teams tackles, and a, a quarterback sack, which I got to admit was a game I wasn't doing. I'm watching the television. I went, wait a minute. Jonathan Edward just got into the back. <laughs> yeah, we saw him play a few snaps in Montreal a few weeks ago. A parrot is knocks it through. Accurate as ever for number 30 in red and white. <laughs> Argonauts offense on field in a tie ball game 31 31 after the Paredes field goal make from 28 yards away looking to throw here Kelly looks back across his body nowhere to go defenders everywhere at that time as Kelly unhappy shows some frustration with the route combination on that left side yeah you'll see the offensive line pulls to the right on this one trying to create some misdirection so that leaves Kelly on his own coming back the other way essentially a naked bootleg he's got no one there to block for him so when the defense tracks him down that ball's got to go somewhere he's just looking to get rid of it looks like he avoid the sack wanted some routes uh, that's what it looked like right he was trying to find somebody now pressure on Kelly gets it away on second down Kaaway flies out from his middle linebacker spot. Kelly has a little conversation with Titus Wall on his way to the sideline as well. Back and forth we go. Carnival atmosphere outside and in. Bengleton, a huge night. Puffs happy. Kelly, flea flicker. Daniels end zone. We got a great one going to the fourth. After three quarters of play, we are all tied up at 31 across the board right now. Up and down the field they go. And uh, for my money, I got to believe Reggie Begleton loves playing games in the East Division this season. Earlier this year, a season high, eight catches, 141 yards. He breaks that here tonight. He's over 180 yards at this point, Wayne Ford. It feels like if Calgary is gonna play shot for shot in this one, it's gotta be Reggie that's gonna control it offensively from the trigger of Jake Merritt. Yeah, well, he's, he's been the guy taking that hole in the middle of the field, making big plays. But remember, Mark and Michelle's got a, a long ball in this one for a touchdown as well. So you wonder if at some point, Bagleton maybe becomes the decoy that that Toronto starts keying on and they look elsewhere on the long ball See whether they can mix and match the attack Likely needed in order to keep pace This one a wobbling boot from Boris Beatty Drops down Calgary returns it across the 20 and Benoit Marion right there alongside Brandon Kelber to help Robbie Smith Finish it off and Jake Mayer it's certainly been a struggle for the last couple of weeks offensively. He's been talking all season with us, trying to find a way to just get out of his own way essentially. And Pat Delmonico told us this week that he's never off. He just has weeks where he's better than other times. He says he always brings it, he's always locked in, he always prepares the right way. But sometimes he just has a game like this, as he did against Ottawa at home in Calgary earlier really this week. Well, and you feel like with the success that they've had tonight throwing the football, it actually brings a little bit of frustration from a Calgary point of view, because yeah. you kind of go, why don't they do this all the time? Especially on the deep passes, had just 14 completions coming in as this run turned away immediately. Dwayne Hendricks into the backfield, and it'll create that difficult down and distance that Calgary struggled with all season. Uh, you see the quickness of Hendricks along that defensive line. Quick flash inside and into the backfield. Fifth tackle for loss on the season. Alarna Rimalade plotting his next pass rush special to try and get home to that man, Jake Nair. Nair gets it away quickly, underneath, incomplete. Uh, Bagleton. Maybe looking.
him to make a move before he had secured the ball here, knowing his old teammate Winton McManus was bearing down. <laughs> Don't you just get the sense it feels like everybody knows everybody <laughs> in this one? Like back and forth they go, and the coaches know each other, the coordinators, the players, the matchups, ex teammates. Flags come up here on the kick as they came up from. Three different locations. 41 yard punt, but sort through the laundry on this one is Mickey Donovan on the field. Not happy. Maybe a substitution error there. Oh, too many men. That would be the second one of the game against the Argos on special teams. Only nine special teams penalties coming into tonight. That's the fewest in the league by six. Too many players. Toronto. The penalties decline. First down. No characteristic tonight for them to have issues with the discipline and getting themselves sorted out. And remember, back early in the game when it was a 14-0 lead for Toronto, they line up too many players on a single side on a field goal attempt on third down in a couple five-yard penalty fresh set of downs next play Luther Hakanabanu touchdown so it's not as though it hasn't cost them here tonight as they're tied at 31 in the fourth quarter Maria Sirocco digs in the middle of that offensive line snaps it back to Kelly who goes quick game to Daniels across the 55 and a first down on first down for the Argonauts and big play and again they're coming on the field there's a penalty against the the punt return team that's the kind of thing that is an offense when you're anticipating having certain field positions you get pushed back can cause you to hang your heads they don't and i you know it's a small thing but this response has been constant from the toronto argonauts this season is a big part of their success confusion here breaking the huddle between daniels and coxie Hopes he'll go to the bottom of your screen. Daniels to the top. Kelly keeps it, rolls to his right, centers the feet, looks for the corner route, sails it high. And a bit of a McLeod Bethel Thompson esque reaction that time from Chad Kelly. Hands on the hips, leaning back, unhappy with his work. Yeah, show a little play action, sneak him to the outside. Julian Hauser not fooled. Course is an early throw. I missed those from Macbeth. <laughs> you can uh, emote with the best of them. Yeah, I uh, a little disappointed Macbeth didn't come back north, particularly with some of the quarterback injuries this year. Intent for Kelly gets blasted by Hauser as he slings it down the sideline. They'll say incomplete. Coxy nearly had it, and Nick Taylor. Macbeth moving on this season and Kelly getting the starting job. Yeah, a little bit of heat supplied up front. They moved Julian Hauser around. So he's got a bit of a running start to hit that spin move. And then Nick Taylor already with an interception in this game. Oof. Battles Coxie with this one all the way to the ground. He's got to survive contact with the ground for this to be a completion. And Nick Taylor with that left hand in there. Challenge flight comes out here as <laughs> Matthew Shinetti. Shooters practicing his uh, challenge flag throws down there behind Ryan Dinwiddie. <laughs> Good form, man. Toronto is challenging, roughing the passer on the previous play. We'll review the play. A lot of fans thought that it might have been for the catch, but. Actually looking on the back end at Hauser. Getting his hands in. Was it late? Is the question here. I'll keep an eye here on Julian Hauser. As Toronto challenges for roughing the passer. He's got that quick spin move to the inside. Ball is being thrown as he 
pushes Kelly. I'm not really sure he has any opportunity to redirect, particularly there was a little bit of a, a bump on him from Olette. Yeah, it looked like it was a bang bang play. Live pictures and the replay from everything we've seen. We'll go to Dave Foxcroft with the announcement. After review, the ruling on the field stands. There is no ruck in the passer. It'll be third down. Toronto's charged a timeout and has no more challenges for the rest of the game. Well, the Toronto Argonauts coming into tonight were 0 for 1, but the fewest attempts. Ryan Dinwiddie really hasn't felt the need to throw the challenge flag so far this season. Just the second time he has, but that one maybe he'll want back when he sees a different look at it, not on the sidelines. So Toronto will punt it away. On the short side. Boris Beatty trying to skip it down inside the 10 yard line. That's exactly where they'll spot it. 38 yard punt. And the Argonauts so fortunate to have a guy like Boris Beatty who can seamlessly go to doing all the kicking jobs. The Argos punter John Haggerty dealing with a little bit of a nagging knee issue this week. Punted a little bit in warm up but unable to go in the game. He's still dressed as the Argos global still holding on field goals and extra points. But Beatty who has done all three jobs in this league steps into punting and has done a fantastic job of it tonight even with the Stampeders trying to send rushes and so on it's not like it's new territory for him. Look very comfortable in all roles he's been asked to fulfill tonight as Mayer with pressure on backed up against his goal line flips it backwards it's completed and somehow they can something out of a whole lot of nothing there goes Levante Bellamy for a game chicken salad from Jake Mayer as this looked like it was about to turn into a safety as he's on his way down as that little chest pass to Bellamy for a six yard game second and four Mayer checks at the line of scrimmage now communicates with his receivers the crowd noise here tonight at BMO Field the annual c &E game Mayer looks quick game Looks outside for Mark and Michelle. Did he dig it out of the grass? In front of Jamal Peters, they'll say yes. First down, Stampeders. First down, Stampeders. Big first down, just in terms of field position, giving themselves some breathing room to try and work here after the, the high wire act along the goal line by quarterback Jake Mayer. Quick set, balls out. Nice job by Michelle to go. Go get it off the ground. Reggie Begleton giving Falarna Remolade a little extra attention in pass protection that time as well. Trying to slow down number seven you see on the defensive line. This time Remolade drops out underneath. There goes to Begleton. Gets it across the 25, the 30, 35, out to the 40. And Begleton drags it all the way to the 44-yard line. As there's an injured Argonaut down behind the play and we'll step away as the Argonauts have an injured player will return right after this. Welcome back to BMO Field with a 31-31 game in the Toronto Argonauts. Secondary defense linebackers having to shift everything around. You see Jonathan Edward, who was the injured Argonaut before the play. Looks like is Royce Mechie moving back to free safety? Dwayne? Yeah, Mechie goes back to free safety. Adarius Pickett goes from nickel to field half, where Mechie had been. The linebackers rotate. Jordan Williams comes to the strong side. McManus in the middle. Jonathan Jones at will. Well, thankfully, is a big stop here on first down. will help them get a second to gather their thoughts. The sixth tackle for loss of the season for Wayne Hendricks. There's a ton of moving pieces all of a sudden for Toronto. And a lot of flexibility from the score. As we welcome in viewers on TSN 5 watching NASCAR in this one. This has been a 500 mile race of its own. And we're only halfway through the fourth quarter. As you see again a lot of talking in that defensive secondary for the Argonauts. So many injuries here tonight trying to sort through it. Second and 12. Looking for a screen. Mayer shovels it underneath to Mills. Now Mayer stuck in the middle of the mess. 
dances away from contact, and Toronto's defense gets a bit of a respite. They get to get off the field and go sit down and talk about who's playing where, what are we doing? Yeah, well, and as we take a look at this play, like, this is something that's so important in the Canadian Football League. You don't have huge rosters, and so you're, it's so important to have versatility built in, not just for your backups, but even for your starters. It's important for people to know multiple positions for exactly these kind of situations. You need to understand entire concepts defensively and offensively because you never know where you may have to play in a pitch. Quick snap comes back to Aaron Crawford of the St. Peter's. To Cody Grace, now to the left side to Von Lee, looking for a block. this week that three phase football so these are the things we choose to care about playing every single snap in the three down game as hard as we possibly can in order to get the best possible result well, they're close to moving to five and zero oh at home and eight and one on the season if they can hold on here against the Calgary Stampeders, the only team to defeat them so far this year, but that game, it didn't feature Chad Kelly. A late flag comes out here, some discussion between the benches, and that'll likely move the starting field position as Jake Mayer comes back out onto the field, trailing by seven. Yeah, it looks like this one's gonna go against Toronto. Jack Kassar as he was making his way back to the sideline. After the play, major foul, unsportsmanlike conduct, 45, Toronto. 15-yard penalty, first down Calgary. Jack Kassar has been in a conversation all night long. Just about everybody on those Calgary special teams, and finally the officials have had enough and decided to throw the flag. Yeah, and you know, he kind of was celebrating his way off, and I, we'll take another look. I'm not sure his collision with Mark and Michelle was actually intentional. <laughs> That's the instigator, I guess, went against Jack Kassar for... And he had been in the face of a couple of Stampeders before that, but no physical contact. And now holds on and down he goes. Underground. Millard Arimalade. Grabs the 
drags him to the turf. about my own management <laughs> beliefs. This is a contract that intrigues me in a good way, as in sports, not just in football. I'm always bothered when teams sign free agents where you feel like they're paying a player for what he did previously, yes. as opposed to paying a player for what he's going to do over the term of the contract. Good pro scouting, know your guys, anticipate what they're going to do, pay him for what he's going to do, not for what he's done. And that's what the Argos are doing with Arimalade in premise. It's easy to pay for what's already happened. If your job is to scout the future, they've certainly done a great job of that is jumping over the top. Toronto goes back to the Curly Giddens speed sweep. A little pop pass off the edge as they did in the first quarter. This one a bit shorter game, but keeps the clock rolling with Toronto in the control. Gittins getting a lot of his touches on that quick hitter. He tries to go airborne here. Had Iami Berglund there to clean up. Free safety pressure blitzing down the pipe. Kelly with a flag that completes it for now for a first down. This one likely going against the Argonauts is it's like Derek Wigan holding Toronto number 66. That's a 10 yard penalty. Repeat second down. Battling to get back to his feet here. Queens Yale veteran. And by far the most experienced Stampeder defender. Keep an eye here. Left tackle Isaiah Cage. Loses his man to the inside, has to give him a little hug. Kitten celebrates, but all for naught with the penalty. Brings it back to second and 16, and Derek Wigan, one of the toughest and most resilient guys on any defensive line in the league, battling to get back up onto his feet. Backed up by J. Ram at Boston College. Maybe see a little bit of him and also see looks like Shaq Richardson going to the sideline as well to get some attention. So both these defenses facing a little bit of attrition. And the stamps look like they'll go with a three-man front here in second and long. With Wigan down, middle of the field, wide open in that alignment. See if Kelly takes it, he'll roll to his right away from pressure. Hop and a skip and a check down to A.J. Olet. 
tackled at midfield. Hunting unit comes out as Calgary. Calgary decides to use their timeout in this spot before the three minute warning hits. A big stop there for the Calgary defense. Noodles. Yes, sir, Jamie McLennan. Now, I, I feel like Jamie probably appreciates a high scoring back and forth, but as a, as a, <laughs> as a goalie, yes. there's got to be a little bit of uh, twisted emotions on this one. Well, there's no goal like causing him PTSD <laughs> every time somebody scores here tonight. So. <laughs> Jamie and his daughter look like they're doing okay enjoying the game down there. Out. Going in the sweet seats here at BMO Field. Boy, Allen lets this one skip into the end zone in a wince of pain from Dwayne Ford next to me. It's, it's one of those tough ones, right? Field position matters. But eight points instead of seven at this stage of the game makes the job a little tougher. <laughs> Taylor talking it over with Boris B. Yeah, it was okay. Yeah. Boris doing a nice job kicking the ball, as we mentioned earlier. And in case you're wondering, that's not an alien invasion. That's a drone show going on at the CNE in the far end zone. I asked them to spell your name before it's over, Dwayne. I appreciate it. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see if it turns out. That's not distracting at all for Jake Mayer. <laughs> <laughs> He's staring it down right now, locked in on his receivers in the Argonauts' defense. Down by eight now after the 75-yard punt single. The shell gets popped. And Darius Pickett. Everywhere he goes, loud noises follow. Yeah, quick hitter here off play action, looking to Michelle in the flat. He's just trying to get this upfield, but... <laughs> Darius Pickett never met a hit he didn't fight. Second down and five. Last play before the warning here. Mayer looks to the right, checks down underneath. Oh, and it's incomplete. A juggling act worthy of the CNE. And Mills just couldn't hang on. So Toronto has two minutes and 55 seconds to take down the only team to beat them so far this season. See if they can close it out when we return. We get a look back at the last time that the Calgary Stampeders winning in Toronto. We got KG at QB. We got Nick Lewis on the receiving end. We got Ricky Ray. Checking it down, Andre Dury over the middle. Last time Calgary lost in Toronto. His rosters look a little different. Uniforms, Noel Prefontaine. Lefty crushing it through, and Scott Milanovic at the helm. Big Mayor trying to keep the streak alive of winning ways against Toronto as that's Mark Heath Ambles, the former Argonaut, moving the chains. Yeah, big completion there. For Jake Mayer moving to his left, finds Ambles drifting to his right into an open hole. Tough throw. Mayer takes it inside, gets it into Cole Tucker, dances away from two. Royce Mechie there to bring him down to the turf. Good gain on first down once again. Calgary moving the football. They've been in some close battles throughout this season. But unable to close the deal. Two and five are the Stampeders in games decided in the final three minutes. There looks to his right, rips this one and all oh, the whole way. Stiggers nearly made up for the big Begleton error he made earlier, giving up the major. Yeah, just his positioning as Stiggers has got to come all the way from the outside to try and get in front of this one. The only thing that prevents that from being a pick. If he had had more of an inside angle, he might still be running. Third down. Offense 
stays on the field here, trailing by eight. Crowd into it, they'll empty it out. First time all ball game. Four man rush, Mayer over the middle. Incomplete, Reggie Begleton. to try and secure it coming into that hole in the middle but as he's kind of drifting forward trying to reach back and get that ball Royce Mechie comes in to make sure that that falls harmlessly to the ground well don't go anywhere it is the CFL two minutes and 15 seconds now it's on the defense to do their part just the fifth turnover on downs for the Stampeders offense this season. Second fewest in the CFL. A.J. Oletta racing to the outside, trying to be wrangled. And staying inbounds. This wall does get him down. Walk the wall and they whistle it in. Yeah, look for a minute like Olette might get this one to the outside. But wall does well. To not let him get those shoulders turned upfield where AJ Olette becomes a nightmare to try and bring down. Kelly breaks the huddle with Devaris Daniels and Monte Cox. He was been lethal tonight to the bottom of your screen. Olette in the backfield. Second and eight. Kelly steps forward to the outside. Big grab. Dijon Brissett. Doesn't get a lot of targets, but that is a huge one. Yeah, Gutsy throwing a big catch. Kelly kind of throwing across his body to his left. Out to the wide side. Brissett climbs the ladder to get it. Fifteenth catch of the season for Brissett. Six special teams tackles grinding away a little bit on the teams. Former second overall pick in 2020. Chad Kelly playing a little bit of the freewheeling style and he's adopted since being in the CFL. That one pays off. First and ten. Show inside, pitch it, get the edge. Ole trying to turn the corner. Close to another first down again, staying in bounds. And yeah, nice execution here. They're going to bring the tackle, Allen, in front of him as a puller leading Calgary. the way. It's a 30 second timeout. and continues tomorrow with a showdown between the Tiger Cats and BC Lions. That should be a great one. It's the Lions looking to get themselves back into contention in the West Division. The last couple of weeks, you can tune in at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, only on TSN. That man right there, Tim White, in a loss against Edmonton, looked real good. We'll see what he has on the West Coast coming up tomorrow as the CFL and TSN rolls on all weekend long. Inside handoff, A.J. Olet here on second and two. Needed to get to the 41-yard line. As Calgary used their timeout. Previous snap. Andrew Harris is... You, you need it? You need a spell or... We good? Right. You, know what? you go finish this thing, Andrew. Well, and this is a, a part of the playbook the Argos didn't really have a chance to get to. In Calgary, Olet limited to seven rushes, seven carries in that ball game as they were kind of chasing that one all night, playing from behind. But now, though a one possession lead, the Argos very comfortable putting the ball in the hands of number 34. J. Ram in there, staring it down in the middle. I had a nice halftime visit with TJ's dad, yes. Thomas, my former teammate. Love it. Yeah, flew up from Final. Alabama Toronto. to see his son play. The Argonauts let the clock bleed down and take a timeout here. Please so reset the game clock. 
to 56 seconds. 56. Looking to Thank get you. to five and zero oh is Toronto in games decided in the final three minutes, and five and zero oh at home as well. So we take a look back. I'll let I'll let you wax poetic on this one. The last time the Argonauts were seven and one. There's a there's a there's a freewheeling new franchise quarterback. Yeah, you, you want me to wax poetic about a breakup was in Hamilton. A game that I felt my Stampeders, <laughs> which for whom I was playing at that time, I want to clarify when I say my Stampeders, <laughs> we felt we should have been representing the West, and Edmonton snuck in. I wonder what could be for this Toronto club. Trying to close this out, go to eight and one. Yeah, they wouldn't mind playing in a Grey Cup down the road in Hamilton that they felt as though they should have been in back in 2021 as Hamilton hosting it two times in three years. Trying to add another one of those and repeat, but long way to go before they can hang another one of those. And the Argos, with all those buys used up in the first half of the season, this just their ninth game of the regular season. So it could be a tough road in the back half. Pitch it out again. Olet turns the corner, spins away, crosses the 30, first down Toronto. And good situational awareness here from A.J. Olet, recognizing defenders are gonna come for the ball. There's that desperation for Calgary. With under 30 seconds to go in this ball game, watch 91. Isaac Adayemi Berglund when he gets there, he's not going for the tackle. He's going for the football. Two hands on the ball. Olet with a strong, strong grip there. Great ball security. Rush defense for the Stampeders helped Toronto to a season low 61 rushing yards on August 4th. The victory over the Argonauts, the only time all season Toronto was held below 90 rushing yards. Well, they've done a heck of a job tonight playing a variety of styles. Burn the clock a little bit, use the running game, situational awareness, go shot for shot, get a flea flicker for a touchdown, take some home run shots over the top. They are a well-rounded club, and they've shown it, and that's why they're 8-1. and And what proves to be the difference? Special teams. A Javon League touchdown after the back and forth shootout on offense. Special teams touchdown provides the winning margin. Eating up the minds there between Dave Dickinson and Ryan Dinwiddie. You can see some of the amazement on their faces as they come together between the benches and just say, hey, heck of a game. Yeah. yeah, big win for the Toronto Argonauts to keep rolling as they fight off the challenge of the Stampeders. And no question, Calgary answered the bell tonight, came up just short. Up and down, this one went back and forth. Luther Hakanavanu into the end zone. Demonte Coxie playing a big role. Begleton was massive for the Stampeders, but they fall just short. They've lost three in a row. Toronto undefeated at home. Thanks for watching. For Matthew Shinetti, Dwayne Ford, and Marshall Ferguson. Time now for SportsCenter.